the main meal is the meat the soup or the stew is just an attachment to the name. Um, what else did I find interesting? They are beer drinking spirits. Oh my god. The green everywhere is really, really amazing. And I love it. Like <laughs> Hello family members, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Isabella Awan and you are watching Adulting with Bella. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. If this is the first time of watching any of my videos or you've been watching these videos and you are just yet to subscribe to my channel, what you waiting for? Look down below. Yeah, yeah, down below. You will see a red subscribe button. Please click on it. Thereafter, you will see a notification bell just beside your red subscribe button. Please also hit on that bell so that you can be among the first to get notifications of my videos whenever I drop them. Apologies for my voice because um, this weather, honestly, is really not for me. Coming from a very hot um, tropical region, so this weather is only God that knows how I'm surviving. I actually thought living in Kano was going to prepare me for this weather. But ladies and gentlemen, Kano is nothing compared to this weather. You know, baby girl just became international and these are the things that come with being international. You know, having this change of environment, sicknesses, you get it? You get it? If you don't get it, forget it. <laughs> I'm being silly right now, but yeah, the weather is really messing me up. I'm half partial sore throat and my voice is partially gone. So please um, just bear with me the audio that comes out from this video. Um, that being said and done, let's dive right to what we, we are here to talk about today. So today, we want to talk about cultural shocks for me in Europe. More specifically, cultural shocks in Belgium. So the things I didn't expect really not culturally maybe the environment and all of that so you know most of us have gone to the uk gone to spain france all in movies and in our dreams but today this is a reality check for me some of them are pleasantly surprising and some of them are not so let's talk about it the first thing i would like to talk about is the weather hmm the weather was the first thing that hit me at frankfurt airport like guys guys see the 12 degrees we used to see it's not this is not what ah no 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 i can't even explain it but there was this cold breeze that was blowing like it looked like the 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 sky had its own ac and the ac was targeted like pointing at me it was yeah we had cold breeze in Kano too but this one is on a different level like i legit was feeling like pains like the dry breeze was drying out the moko in my nose so breathing was a bit difficult for me and oh my god i really struggled with the weather so guys if you're coming to this place you need to prep your mind for the weather like this is just ending of October and it's like this. I'm like, how do you people survive when it's snowing? Ah, ha, ha, ha. We think this thing we want to travel abroad or not. So yeah, the weather is like really, really messy and it can really mess with you. The second thing is how organized these people are. I mean, at the airport, you could see like a TV giving you details, flights from here to here. Where are you going from? like there were, there were signs everywhere when i say signs i'm not saying broken signs i'm not trying to shade anybody it was even so nice that at some point you could see um like you could see the signs in english and in french i was like whoa or the signs could be in english and in german like it was really nice like i felt like things are really really um organized here and it's easy to apparently just navigate it so we just need to read things like if you have to move from one terminal to another you could just see the sign oh terminal a follow here so you just keep following and it would lead you to your destination where you have to stop and wait for a bus you would see a sign or it would be clear it would clearly be spelled out stop here and wait for your boss to come pick you so i think 
how organized these people are for me is superb i love it let's forget the story that happened in frankfurt that was a story on its own among these guys the organization is top notch uh, i didn't expect less from them though now another thing that really shocked me like was a cultural shock for me was their high population of elderly people i'm not saying we don't have elderly people i want to say elderly people i mean people like 60 above like like this 60 above like 70 80 now i'm not saying we don't have elderly people in nigeria after all my parents are 60 above but seeing them on the street like they were literally everywhere at the airport like in nigeria elderly people tend to stay at home more and all of that so see these people on the streets i'm not already doing the math the ones i'm seeing on the road and the ones that are inside the house it seems these people have more elderly people than young people i don't know i'm going to check the statistics for um belgium and come and and show you what their age um, demography looks like i'll just insert a clip of that here in this video but i think i really think they have a lot a lot of elderly people in belgium now taking off from the fact that they have a lot of elderly people in belgium they also have this elderly people working they are working they are not guys they're not at home trying to wait for their kids to pay their bills or for social security to take care of them. They are working. Guess what? My hair upstairs were like 50 above. Okay, I think I had one that was maybe in her 30s or thereabout. But the hair upstairs that I mean in Nigeria, hair upstairs, the picture of hair upstairs is we have are like young pretty ladies. But this guy, I said this woman had full gray hairs. So she should be nothing less than 60 if not approaching 70 she was my hell stairs and i was like oh wow you could see people the waiters we feel like these jobs are actually jobs for younger people the receptionist is like elderly people and uh, i'm so impressed to see elderly people strong and working you see them on the streets with their sneakers their joggers riding bikes oh my god strong don't tell them i said that but they are strong like i really loved that part of belgium like seeing the elderly people being like a very active part of the population another interesting thing about belgium is their housing structure belgium i would say it's a developed country so the picture of belgium i had was these are the kind of houses we would be seeing but i was surprised we seen this type of house like he gave me not even brigitte vibes you know those olden days modern olden days um developed countries like you know those small small bricks that we think those are like old houses and all of that those were the popular houses and they were like small houses with their yards and everything so it was it was quite amazing that the structure of houses i thought i was gonna be. don't get me wrong they have like tall buildings like their central park no their grand central is like a tall big building but most of the residential houses are like small um bungalows arranged on the street so i was actually expecting high-rise buildings but it was interesting that they were small buildings now i'm building up from there the next thing i saw that was really interesting about belgium was the greenery oh my god guys these people like green like just outside my window right now what you will see i'm sure you can see it from the corner of this there are trees go growing there there are like grasses growing i actually think belgium should be the country one of the european countries with the lowest carbon emission or whatever because the green everywhere is really really amazing and i love it like the the you breathe good air oh it shocked me eh <laughs> Lagos chance <laughs> you need to leave Lagos and come and breathe good air but god the air was so clean it was so light it was beautiful like the green everywhere like they literally used the greenery to design the street um after the greenery another thing that was shocking to me was their narrow streets and now we all think that because it's a civilized country they will have like three lanes you know that in nigeria we are so crazy about this oh lagos the streets are four lanes double lanes so highway but no shade 
um four lanes, double lanes, and all of that. Yes, are tiny. Like let it tiny. Like I remember when we had to go somewhere. I remember when we had to go somewhere with like this they are luxurious buses. I don't know what they are called, but those tall, huge buses. Like when these buses were passing through the street, it was like it was passing through in between two houses. Like this is one house, this is another house, and the bus was just literally in the middle, like passing in the middle. So you could see somebody's room from inside there. Like they have narrow streets. And I was expecting bigger streets, you know, the flyover, you come down, the spaghetti highways, the fallings, you know, and all of that. But it was quite surprising that they actually have like really, really, really narrow streets. And I think that's why it's really hard for you to get driving license in the abroad. Because driving in those streets mm, is not funny. In fact, that's the main reason I got an accident my second day here in Belgium. Another thing is the people are really receptive. Um, trust me. Coming here, I've had stories of French people that they are not really nice people. Mm, and yeah. That's what people say. French people are not really nice people. But I think these guys are so really receptive. They understand you're African or you're from a non-French speaking um, country. And once you approach them, if they can't speak English, they will tell you their English is not so good. Or they will look for someone who can speak English just to interact with you and get you whatever they want. Customer service, top notch. It's not what we normally see in Nigeria. Nobody cares about your customer service in Nigeria. So I am actually happy and really excited to like have this great customer service. I can call the reception three times and nobody's acting mean and rude and making it look like I'm dumb. I even asked them to bring English menu that the menu that I'm seeing is in French. They were like, no problem. They had to print a menu and send to me. So the customer service is top notch. They're really receptive of strangers to Another interesting thing is these people's food. You know in Nigeria how we we eat amala and we do with goat meat. No, these people eat goat meat with amala and we do. Now let me explain. The main meal is the meat. The soup or the stew is just an attachment to the main meal, and it is really really intriguing to see. You will see like the steak is the food. Any other sauce or mashed potato is a side. You people eat meat. Let's forget the fact that the meat to me is not properly seasoned or probably cooked. But why is the meat so big? Why is the meat the main meal? Yeah, so I found that really, really, really interesting. Um, what else did I find interesting? Their beer drinking spirit. Oh my god. So I think I thought to be bougie, you need to be drinking like a glass of wine, some champagne, some wet, you know, some prosecco, like that's bougie alcohol. The beer and the jeans were for like the street boys, at least that's what we know in Nigeria. Drinking beer is not really a bougie thing. But here, these guys have like 20 brands of beer. And, see, and they are beer, they don't even bring it in bottles, those 750 bottles, no. They have a jar, so you turn beer as if it's water dispenser. People drink. Oh my god! I am, I am in severe pain. The way these people drink beer is quite shocking, and at the same time, it's a bit pleasant to see that um, the things we actually take as being bougie and the things we say we take as being local is really not the case abroad. So, their beer drinking spirit is amazing for me. So guys, I'm going to end this video here. If I remember anything, I'm going to insert it in this video. Hi guys, I'm back again because I promise I'm going to come back if I remember anything that I found shocking in Belgium. So yeah, there are three things I actually found shocking in Belgium that I forgot to mention while I was shooting the other video. The first one is the fact that these guys love cycling a lot. Like, I am so surprised that Belgium is actually the seventh highest emitter of carbon in Europe because these guys bring out so many initiatives to actually reduce their carbon emission. They do a lot of electric bikes, they ride bikes a lot. And when I say ride bikes a lot, I'm referring to every gender, male or female, every age group, young, children, old, and every social status, the rich, the poor, the average. Bike is like a 
normal means of transportation to Belgians. And you can see the rich people pack their Maserati, their Bugatti, their Range Rovers at home and take a bike to work. And that's like, wow. Now the second thing that I forgot to mention is the fact that these people like trekking. Maka, why? Why do you people like trekking? I mean, when we went into town to go shop, these guys were literally like, they stopped us somewhere and the taxi was like, oh, this is where he can stop. He can't take us into the street. Because there was this long street where everything you need was on the street. Every clothing brand from H&M, Zara, Primark, they were all on the streets. The McDonald's, the um, Bureau de Change, the gift stores were all on the street. He said he couldn't, so we had to trek. And that street was long. And you know the funny thing? Even when we were done with our bags, like we were all carrying two to three bags, some people were carrying up to four shopping bags, we were going back. We couldn't find taxi to take us back to um, La, La Hop where we were staying. Guess what? We had to trek for like 15 minutes. 15 go minutes before we got to the taxi stop and found the taxi. I have the money and I am willing to pay, but no, you say I have to trek to the taxi stop. Why? Like, Maka, why? Why do you do this to me? The third thing I forgot to mention in the previous video is the love for sweet things. Mm -mm. Let me be more specific. Chocolate and waffles. These guys! I mean, if you go to Belgium and you don't eat Belgian waffles and um, Belgian chocolate, especially the truffles, then you've not been to Belgium! And these things are super sweet. Like, the sugar level in this thing can raise your sugar level. How do they survive? Like, I thought Nigerians were really big on sugar, sweet things, but man! That's very good though. I, I just had to be conscious to avoid it because her baby girl is trying to check her calories and take her sugar intake. But it was good to see that um, they actually had a lot of sweet things, sweet snacks that I really enjoy having. Yeah, so thank you guys. I just thought I should drop this in before I proceed. Yeah, yeah. These are the points I, I have for for now um the things the cultural differences i have noticed um till i see you next time on adulting with bella i'm still enjoying my um trip in belgium and i have things to run to so i'm gonna end this video here don't forget to like share and subscribe and then comment down below bye guys signing out <laughs>